okay Johnny Gray part three yes and then I was, oh, I was doing sessions firstly with everybody because shall we say I was the in thing and uh, of course in 1947 I won the melody maker poll with the best tenor player in the business which I probably was at that time and uh, of course uh, we also I did sessions with uh, Maynard Ferguson's orchestra and Ronnie Scott and myself were the two tenor players and then I was also in Robert Farnan's orchestra which is the pinnacle of everything if you work for Robert Farnan and Teddy's that's like well with Teddy's it was the same as serving an apprenticeship with Rolls Royce I, I was made you know and yeah. I just I didn't have to phone anybody I'm not being stupid uh, uh, the, the, the telephone never stopped and then of course I got a, I was recorded with Dusty Springfield at Phillips when Lonnie Gold the the, the, the fixer as they called it from here by said oh John can you do a session this evening uh, 7 till 10 uh, at EMI I said who is it with he says the Beatles so I said ok so I got there at 6.30 you always get there half an hour early to get warmed up because the first take can be the take that, that stands so I got there at 6.30 I knew I was in, in, in the right uh, Abbey Road, the studio. Of course, the accountant said, Hello, John. He paid me and I signed for it, of course. And, <laughs> and of course, they didn't turn up at half past nine. So, uh, you know, I said to George, I said, Well, I, I live in Salty at the time. So I said, and so they put, uh, put me up in an hotel, you know. Couldn't believe it. So I was there the next day and I did, I found that uh, I got on well with the Beatles. Uh, the, the, Paul McCartney was a very good piano player, but he says, can you do this? He got no music. Can you do this on the tenor? So yes, and of course, don't forget, the guitars were all E and A, so that's a difficult keys for tenor. So you need four sharps or five sharps to start with, which are all side fingers, you see. And anyway, then, as a result of that, the record companies came on to me to record for them because I'd worked with the Beatles, you see, and the Beatles were so big, it was unbelievable, you know. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, normally then, you have to go begging, you know, when you make a record, and they say, well, if you pay for it, we'll do it, but Phillips paid for all the records for me. But what I did, uh, I, I, I said, well, I'm only going to play what I want to play, and I only played Super Stardust September song, I only played Tuesday, everybody knew when they bought the albums they knew what they were getting and of course I played superb uh, subtone tenor on a lot of them as well and I could also play a complete chorus 32 bars in one breath I could also swim in a bath I could do underwater an hour because I was so fit you see and of course I got this tremendous embouchure and people would be horrified I played with a 10 star saxophone Murphy oh, oh. with the four star reed as well the jaw was so powerful you know I could blow brass sections off the stand if I wanted to but I could also play superb subtone tenor as well now as a result of that the albums Full House Saxes was number four in the Japanese uh, hit parade I had another one uh, Movie Time which was uh, very big in the Canadian charts and the other ones, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, uh, the air, the, the aircraft bought them to play background music before they took off because it was so smoothy, and I did very well. I made four albums, and they sold like a bomb everywhere. The fifth one didn't sell, so the accountants threw me out. Simple as that. That 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 show business, you have to learn to put up with it. You know. Accountants, just going to cut this one, make another one.